So following up on last week's episode, I suddenly stopped hearing from the state game warden. So I wrote him, It seems you know my name now. I had no choice but to try to protect myself in reaching out to you, but I should have known it wouldn't work, or not for long. Everything I have told you other than my name has been true, and the video and audio clips I have shared are all mine. I can prove this. I do indeed have Sasquatch occasionally visiting my property and have recorded them also near Montpelier. And my daughter and I are sometimes afraid. I contacted you and others in Fish and Wildlife to see if you could possibly shed some light on the situation from your professional standpoint. I'd still love to meet up if you are willing. So I sent that um, a number of days ago. And whereas he had gotten back to me right away in the past, I haven't heard back. So I'm very doubtful that this is going to lead anywhere. But the stonewalling that I now have detected seems to indicate to me that I should target my Freedom of Information Act request to Fish and Wildlife. But I'm also going to target uh, the Forestry Department. My nephew by marriage is the forester of one of Vermont's 14 counties. Today I'd like to share with you excerpts from a recent lecture that researcher Robert Kreider delivered in New Mexico. I'll put the link to the whole lecture below. I've been in touch with Mr. Kreider and I hope to have him live on the program very soon. He first talks about how his research group in that state began to get noticed by others, some in quite prominent positions. Now, being when we started to make a movement in this deal, the other enthusiasts, some professional, some not, um, actually gained a little bit of confidence and started to contact us about inside information. Now, this is stuff from like um, forest rangers and people out of the BLM and the uh, Department of Agriculture and things like that. Oh, that we have access or have had access and commonly do to information that most people are not privy to. Now, we're also entrusted with a lot of this information. So people from these agencies have come to us and said, man, you guys got to take a look over here. A couple of these times that, that it resulted from either human injury or death, death of livestock, or damage to property. Kreider next talks about his participation a few years ago in the famous Brian Sykes DNA study out of Oxford University. And many of you know just how sloppy and irresponsible that study was in many ways. Robert goes through some of this and then talks about how when Brian Sykes did not end up even testing the samples that Kreider submitted, he brought all the information to the local television station. When we did the Sykes study, I released that information. KOAT News here in Albuquerque immediately hit us and said, what in the world's going on? So we brought them up and we showed them. Out of what we presented to them, they produced a 22-minute documentary. Anna Vasquez wrote us an email and said it was so compelling that it had even the hardcore skeptics in the studio second-guessing what they thought they knew. Now, this is a 22-minute documentary special, news special, produced by them, on our results, us as the primary. And from the night it was going to air, she wrote us in a half panic, and she was so apologetic. And she said that when it went to the studio heads, and they viewed it, that it scared them so bad that they had them chop that down to a three and a half minute piece in which we were in it less than 30 seconds. And the reason being, and I have it in the emails, the reason being is they didn't want to spread unnecessary fear. Now, so what they did show in that 30 or 45 seconds of us was incorrect location, incorrect dates on the video, incorrect information across the board. Now, I have to ask you why again. There we go again. Now, why? What's wrong with the truth? Now, if it's just information, it's just data, it's just physical evidence, I'm not giving my opinion here. What's wrong with this? Is truth out the window now? Because all I'm saying is this, and we just present this. Okay, if it's too much to handle, I'm sorry. If a studio head gets scared, fine. But is it their job to declare what's going to be too fear or too scary for the rest of you? And is, then, is that news? It isn't. This isn't journalism. It isn't news. So we think and we take for granted that we're going to be hearing and receiving information if it comes to light. That's a media outlet. That is an avenue for you to hear about it. So if, you're not, if you don't look and actively search and dig through the absolute mountains, and I'm not kidding, 
of worthless information to get to the truth. Unless you do that, you're not going to know. Because they're not going to just outright tell you. Now that's kind of a shame. Because it's got a large impact. It has a, a socio-religious impact, socio-economic impact. As well as, what about the Forest Service? Haven't they known? Hasn't anyone in academia known? Has the Bureau of Land Management? Don't they know? If these things exist, and it's already listed and it's classified, and it's in Zubank's uh, database, how do they not know? Okay, it raises two questions. One of incompetency, right? Or one that they're not telling us the truth. And you don't want people to start wondering any of this stuff and start to lose confidence in any of these ages or their agencies or any of these authorities. That's a big deal, because with that comes potential, with, with the existence of a, of a real creature comes the potential for real danger to the people that are in its environment. Any large creature often whacks a smaller creature at one point or another. This has actually occurred. As well, you're not going to read about these things unless you really did. And some of these you have to go right into FBI investigations to find out information. Why is the FBI involved? Well, they only get involved in humans. There's, they should never be involved in an animal attack. Yet we see these things. This is an indicator to you that something's going on that's not correct. And it's got a real potential danger for the public in certain areas, not everywhere. And what we're finding out about the species is, as a whole, they're not dangerous or aggressive. But they certainly can be. I've been injured on two occasions. One of them I have on video. Um, I know that a cow didn't sneak up on me, and, and we got a video and throw a rock and hit us with a rock at 50 miles an hour. And it, it, injured, it injured me. These things possess a threat, even if they're not trying to actually hurt you. Humans are fragile creatures. Now we've had some episodes in the Sandias. This is where it got pretty weird. Because when you start to put two and two together, which is what no one wants anyone to do, trust me, you begin to realize, wow, they're not only occupying some of the more remote or rugged regions of our state, but hey, everything that goes with an animal in the natural order exists with this creature. Which means, well, it could be upset one day. It could have offspring and be upset that being overprotective of its offspring. It could be in the rut or feeling a pheromonic reaction and as well be defensive or, or aggressive. Now, as long as everyone's saying it doesn't exist, well, certainly there's no danger, is there? So get on out there on the woods and, and trails and have yourself a good time okay, until something happens. And then when it does, no one says, no one comes clear, no one's come clean and says, what might have done that? Because then what? A simple economic impact is California State Parks. They receive over $80 million a year in admission fees alone. Now, we all know the admission fee when you go to a state park, that's nothing. That's the cheapest expenditure, is it not? But we're talking $80 million alone just in admission fees, just in state parks. It's not monument land, state land, BLM land, or anything else. So we're talking, relative speaking, tens of billions of dollars a year, if not far more, about trying to figure groceries and gas and travel and everything else. Now, the propensity for losing that type of revenue is enough by itself. But what about the liability? What about 30 years of saying, oh, no, it's cool, go to the woods? And all the relatives that have lost people that come up missing, or there has been many, many cases of maulings by something unreal that rips people apart. What about when all that comes back and the family says, wow, I wonder if that's what that was? Didn't you guys know about it? Well, there's only two answers then, isn't there? There's the one, though, we didn't know, back to incompetence. Or, well, we knew, but we didn't have the, the means to tell you because maybe it wasn't accepted. Well, that's right back to the other part now, isn't it? So, between all this gruff, there's a reality flowing through it. And we're bumping the edge of what can be held back in secrecy now. We've gained enough understanding of the species now to not only predict their behavior, but often even their location. 